happy Black Heritage Month! I am so excited to get ready to begin my Blackathon reading. I did start this weekend. It is now February 7th. So it's been a full week since the beginning of February. And I have been working a lot. So I haven't had a lot of time for reading, but this weekend I read That Hair and it was pretty good. I am almost done with it. I have a little bit of a hard time with it sometimes. I I don't know. I feel like it's less of a novel and more of an essay. And it's definitely something that I would have studied in one of my college classes as an English major and it would have been something that would have been amazing for my intersectionality class or my women authors class. There's so much to dig into and it's one of those essays that we would have spent weeks dissecting and analyzing and pulling it apart and putting it back together again. So. It's kind of a lot for my brain right now. <laughs> I haven't done that kind of reading in years. It's been years since I've done that kind of deep analytical reading. And it's been really good for my brain. <laughs> I have been, I'm going for a walk. The fairgrounds are right there. The horses are out oh, and it's lovely and sunny and it's Sunday and I'm enjoying my life, but I um, have been annotating the book and I have been underlining my favorite parts, the most profound quotes that I have found so far. And honestly, it's just really refreshing to work my, my brain that hard. I haven't done that academically in a while and I used to love being in school so it's definitely <laughs> a difficult read if um, you're looking for something to pick up that's that's easy to dive into this is not it <laughs> it takes rereading certain parts and the language is very complex and academic and not easily accessible. You really have to dig in deep and there's a lot of metaphor and a lot of allegory and a lot to take apart, like I said. It's basically the story of her relationship with her hair and how her hair is a representation of her own struggle with her black identity. I'm gonna finish it today. I'll probably come back and read some of my favorite quotes to you guys so that you can kind of get an example of what I'm talking about. But it's a really, it's really short and it, I feel like was a really good way to set the tone for this readathon. It's the only nonfiction that I'm reading. The rest of them are going to be fantasy sci-fi or just regular fiction. So it's the toughest one out of the way, but it's also, I feel like maybe the most important one. So yeah, so far so good. The way others treated my hair was always symbolic of the domestic confusion between affection and prejudice, which has always been an excuse for my own shortcomings in caring for it. Are we still the same? We who can't remember having walked so swiftly, having smiled so carefreely, having taken a dive from such heights, having done our hair with such dedication, we who resurfaced sick, morose, joyful, weary, defeated, without remembering ever having returned or being defeated, between what we are and this. Hello everybody. Right, I feel like it's woken up now and people know we're here. Mm -hmm. the comments. So. Hello. 
I am home from work. Today was a pretty rough day. There was just a lot of fighting. <laughs> I feel like my students are uh, starting to um, get a little bit hormonal <laughs> because there was a lot of fighting and a lot of tears today and it was pretty stressful. So I came home and I watched a bunch of booktube and got caught up on the last few vlogs that were put up for Polarthon. And now I am watching the Polarthon and Blackathon combined sprints. I didn't watch them when they came out this last week. But I'm sat down and I am reading A Song of Wraiths and Ruin. And I began this a couple of days ago. I'm now on chapter 10. And I'm listening to the audiobook and reading along, and I think it's beautiful so far. It jumps back and forth between two perspectives. There is a young man named Malik who belongs to a marginalized group, and he and his siblings are forced to leave home to seek their fortune in a nearby city where their kind is not welcome. And so they have forged fake papers, and they're on their way to try and earn money so that they can live and then also send money home to their family so that their family can continue to live. It's pretty hard times. Things go wrong very quickly. <laughs> I won't say more than that. And then on the other hand, there is the perspective of a princess and her name is Karina. The princess's name is Karina and Karina is fighting the role that she is playing. She was never meant to take the throne. Her older sister died years ago, and she has the sense that she doesn't fit into the role that she has been cast. And she desires to leave and to travel and to live her own life and to be independent. And so she's, she's fighting against the role that she's found herself in. And and through a unexpected course of events, which I will not tell you because spoilers, um, the two characters find that their lives are intertwined in different various ways. So, so far so good. The storytelling is beautiful. The audiobook is really well done. The two different narrators are very... Um, their voices are very musical and I really enjoy listening to them and the story itself is just very captivating. I have found that it seems to be going fairly quickly and I am really enjoying it so far. So I'm gonna dig in and listen to the audiobook. I'd like to finish this in the next couple of days so I'm bumping up my audio listen to hopefully two times speed by the end of the night and just getting as much done tonight as I can. It's about 5.30, I think. What time is it? It's just after 5.30, so I've got a few hours left before I have to go to bed, and we'll see how far I can get. Another quick update. It is 
Wednesday. And last night I read quite a lot of this. I think I read over 100 pages last night. I am well over halfway through the book. And I left off on chapter 21, which in this edition is 279 pages, but it's the arc. And I'm noticing, listening to the audiobook, that there are definitely some differences in the arc versus the published copy. Nothing really significant, but just some of the words are different and some of the things are either added or taken out. So it can be a little... Uh, it takes you out of the story just a little bit, so uh, listening to the audiobook with an arc is a little bit... I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it, it's really helping me get through this a lot faster. But this story is really, really interesting. I don't want to give away too much more than I did in the last clip because I feel like it's good to go into this story kind of blind, but I will say that I really appreciate the representation of the struggles that these characters go through. So one of the main characters deals with panic attacks and the other main character is dealing with like PTSD and grief and migraines from stress and grief and all of those things. So the representation of those struggles that those characters are going through is really well done and I really appreciate that in this. I also really am enjoying the plot line. It's kind of like a tournament trope. So there are challenges that the characters are having to overcome and in order to win the ultimate prize. And yeah, I'm just really, really loving this story so far. I know I'm giving kind of a vague synopsis, but I'm trying not to give any spoilers away. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is going really, really well. I'm hoping that I can finish it tonight. We'll see. I'm also going to make some dinner and stuff and kind of get some adulting done tonight as well. But I'm going to sit down and see how far I can get. It is now a few hours later and I've officially finished this novel. Five out of five stars. I need the sequel right now. <laughs> It was really, really good. I'm not going to tell you guys much more than what I already said in the last couple of clips because spoilers, but highly, highly recommend this book. It is so well written. The characters are great. The love story is intriguing. The fantasy, the world building. It was a great prompt for the conversation between loyalty and betrayal understatement. Definitely a good book. I didn't realize it was such a good choice for that, but it really was. So yeah, long story short, I absolutely loved this book. Definitely pick it up if you get the chance. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden, golden. I'll follow only golden, golden Golden, golden things spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden I'll follow the golden 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 things gold hair gold ring Hello! I am here to update you on my Blackathon reading. Today is February 23rd, 
and so far I haven't done too shabbily in my TBR. I have two books left that I need to finish before the end of this month and time is running out pretty quickly. So, so far I have read That Hair, I read um, Some Places More Than Others, which is a middle grade that is going to feature in another vlog. And then I also read Escaping Exodus, which I read in my previous weekend vlog. So if you want to check out my thoughts on that, you can check out my vlog that I posted earlier this month. But I have two more books by Black authors to fulfill not only my tarot TBR, but my TBR for the team that I'm on for Blackathon, which is the science fiction and fantasy team. So Last night I picked up both of them and I'm alternating alternating 100 pages each to try and get through them by the end of this month. The first book that I picked up was A Phoenix First Must Burn. And this is a collection of short stories by black authors that are science fiction and fantasy. And I blew through the first 100 pages of this really quickly. I love this. I have never really read short story books. I'm not a fan, especially of just standard fiction short stories, but I am in love with this. I think I would really enjoy reading more short stories that are fantasy and science fiction. So that has opened up a whole new world of reading for me, <laughs> but I am not worried about getting this done quickly. I am absolutely in love with it. I read the first like five stories and there's 15 stories so I am a third of the way through and they're just really well written. They're just long enough to give a little bit of a glimpse into a world, into a concept, an idea. The characters are pretty well thought out, the writing is lovely, and I'm just, I'm really enjoying the series of short stories in this so far. And then I also read the first 100 pages in A Song Below Water. I didn't realize this, but it is actually the first book in a series. Essentially, the main character is a teenager, and she is a siren. She lives in Portland, Oregon with her family and her best friend, and they had to move from California after her identity as a siren was almost discovered, and if this is the case, it would be pretty devastating. Sirens in this community are not only taboo and extremely feared, but they are completely unwelcome in this society. They are considered to be uh, manipulative and monstrous and dangerous. And so her identity is very much hidden. As a siren, she struggles to hide her powers because if she becomes overly upset, overly excited, her emotions can take over and her siren voice will start to come out. And it would basically give her away as being a siren. In this world, it's set in Portland, Oregon in modern times, but things like sprites and sirens and other mythological creatures are real and known to be real. So it's definitely like a fantasy or like a realism. Magical realism, I guess, is what I would call this genre. And so far, it's really intriguing. There's a mystery about kind of what happened in Santa Cruz to cause her to have to leave. We don't know exactly the full story of that. We know that she has a small network of people who know her true identity and help her keep it a secret. And we also know that her father and her have a very strained relationship because he is constantly living in fear that she is going to be discovered. And this puts a huge wedge in their relationship. So the dynamics in relationships are really interesting. She also has a best friend who is struggling with her own kind of trauma and it's, it's alluded to, kind of hinted to, that her trauma is related to interactions with sprites. So really interesting, really intriguing. I'm excited to get more into this tonight, and I will give you guys an update when I have read some more. It is February 28th, and I have finished one book. 
of the two that I was reading in my last update, and that is A Phoenix First Must Burn, a series of short stories by black authors, and I loved this book so much. Five out of five stars, unreservedly. Most of the stories had main characters that were women. Um, some of them were queer, some of them were not, but all of them had a story to tell, and it was absolutely beautifully done. My cat can hear the food going. <laughs> Her automatic feeder. Um, yeah, there was not a single story in this book that I did not like. I blew through this way more quickly than I was expecting because I generally don't read short stories, so I was expecting it to take me longer to get through them, but I actually sped through this. I absolutely loved every minute of the time that I spent reading this, and I wholeheartedly recommend it to anybody who is interested in reading short stories that are sci-fi and fantasy. Just an amazing book. It's the last day of the month, and this is the last book on my TBR. I have just about half of it to read left. It's really, really good. This is a story about two young women who live in Portland, and I can't remember if I gave a very in-depth update about what I was reading of this before, but essentially they're living in Portland in a world that is filled with magical creatures like gargoyles and sirens and sprites, mermaids. The way that the book is written makes you really feel like those things are something that could actually exist in the world. It's very, very well written. Really intriguing. There's a lot of social commentary in here on the fear that African Americans face in our society. A lot of commentary on police brutality. A lot of commentary on the fact that racism is still very prevalent in our society. I read this as my trans slash LGBTQ pick, and I think that, honestly, it's more like a minority story. It tells the story of any marginalized people who feel unsafe in the world that they live in and feel like they can't be truly themselves. So this is a powerful, beautiful book. I have not read it all the way yet, as you can see, but it has already sparked really deep conversations between me and people that I am close with, and I can almost for sure tell you that this is going to be another five-star read for me. So I'm going to sit for the rest of the evening, it's already 7.30, and just try and finish this by the end of tonight, and then I will have finished my TBR. But I will give you guys an update later once I finished it. Good morning. It is like 7.30. And I just got to work a little while ago, but I wanted to wrap up this vlog. I did manage to finish The Song Below Water, and I absolutely loved it. I loved it. I gave it five stars. The ending was a little convenient, um, which brought it down just a little bit for me, but I still gave it five stars. I thought that the atmosphere was really well done, the writing was wonderful, the characters were really well thought out and developed, and the story was really unique and intriguing, and uh, it was right up my alley, all of the, the supernatural elements within Oregon. I mean, so, so cool. So, really, really loved reading that story, and officially finished all of the books on my TBR for not only February, but also for Blackathon. So, so happy to report that my month went really, really well. I really enjoyed the time that I spent in this readathon. I felt like it sparked a lot of important discussions and thoughts in my brain. My hair won't stay where I want it to stay because it's still wet. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really a really great experience. I also watched a couple of amazing films that were recommended by Jesse over at Books and Bowties, Bowties and Books, and it was really a great experience. I would highly recommend uh, participating next year if you're interested because it was great. So good. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog here so I can edit it, get it up, and start working on my March TBR. Today is officially um, the 2nd of March, so I'm a little bit behind. Uh, but I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Yesterday.